a man enough between the two, and together, half a man, at best. <laughs> Gentlemen, importune me no farther, for how I firmly am resolved, you know. That is, not to bestow my youngest daughter before I have a husband for the elder. If either of you both love Katharina, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. Uh, no, uh, hideous pleasure. She's too rough for me. Too rough? That's a problem for everyone. If the man exists that is rough enough for her, I pity them both. Gentlemen, content ye. I am resolved. But what, what, Schoolmasters will I keep within my house, fit to instruct Bianca. If you, Hortensio, or you, Signor Gremio, know any such, prefer them hither. For to schoolmasters, I will be very kind. And so farewell. Oh, the problems of Padua. Who to wed the widow? Always husband hunting. to instruct her. I have it, Tranio. I will be master, schoolmaster and undertake the teaching of the maid. You will be master in my stead. I am content to be Lucentio because so well I love Lucentio. Ah, Tranio, my marvelous mute man. Petruchio has come to Padua. Petruchio is a man of strength and sense. Aye, strength to govern himself well, and sense enough to stay away from Catherine. Crowns in my purse I have, and goods at home, and so am come abroad to see the world. Happily, best I may, to thrive and wive. Wive? Shall we wish thee to a shrewd, ill-favored wife? And yet I'll promise thee she shall be rich. And very rich. Yet I'll not wish thee to her. If thou knowest one rich enough to Petruchio's wife, tell me, be she foul, cursed, shrewd, or worse, she moves me not. I come to wive it wealthily in Padua. If wealthily, then happily in Padua. Renowned in Padua for her scolding tongue, her name is Catherine Manola. But will you woo this wild cat? I will not sleep till I see her. Of all titles, the worst.
Bianca, get the end. <coughs> Why dost thou wrong her that did there wrong thee? When did she cross thee with a bitter word? Nay, now I see. She is your treasure. She must have a husband while I must stand barefoot on her wedding day. Daughter Catherine, I pray you. Talk not to me. I will go sit and weep till I can find occasion for revenge. Good morning, neighbor Baptista. We present you this young scholar, Camus. He has been long studying at the universities. He is learning in Greek and Latin, mathematics and music, etc. Pray accept his service. A thousand thanks. Welcome. May I be so bold as to know the cause of your coming? Pardon me, sir. The boldness is mine own. I make myself a suitor to your daughter, and to Bianca, fair and virtuous. Lucentio is my name, son of Vincentio of Pisa. Have you not a daughter, sir, called? Catherine, fair and virtuous. Uh, I have a daughter, sir, called Catherine. Then tell me, if I win your daughter's love, what dowry shall I have of her to wife? You are too blunt. <sighs> Whence are you, sir? What may I call your name? I am a gentleman of Verona, sir, that hearing of her beauty and her wit her affability and gentle modesty, her wondrous qualities and mild behavior, and bold to come to make mine offer for her. Petruchio is my name, Antonio's son. Now tell me, what dowry shall I have with her? After my death, the one half of my lands, and in possession, 20,000 crowns. And for that dowry, I'll assure her of her widowhood, be that she survived me, with all my lands and leases whatsoever. Signor Antonio, you shall go see your pupil presently. Leave this gentleman to my daughter and tell her he is her tutor. Sir. Let a contract therefore be drawn between us, that covenants may be kept on both our parts. Aye, when the special thing is well obtained, I mean her love, for that is all in all. Why, that is nothing, for I am rough and will not like a babe. <laughs> <laughs> then I shall send my daughter Kate to you, but be thou armed for some unhappy word. Say that she rails. Why, then I'll tell her plain she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. Say that she frowns. Why, then I'll tell her plain. She looks as clear as morning roses, newly washed with dew. Good morrow, Kate, for that's your name, I hear. They call me Catherine, that do talk of me. You lie. In faith, you are called plain Kate, and funny Kate, and sometimes Kate the Curse. But Kate, the prettiest Kate in Christendom, hearing thy Mildness praised in every town, thy virtue spoken of, and thy beauty sounded. Myself am moved to woo thee for my wife. Move you heads. I knew you at the first. You were immovable. Why, what's immovable? A stool like this. Then sit on me for uh, knowing you to be uh, uh, young and light. Uh, too light for such weight as you to catch. Yes, as heavy as my weight should be. 
should be, should buzz. Well taken, and like a buzzer. Oh, slow-winged dove, shall a buzzer take thee? I for a dove as he takes a buzzer. <sighs> Dowry greed on 
I'll give you, near you, I will marry you. Now, Kate, I am a husband for your turn. For by this light whereby I see thy beauty, thy beauty doth make me like thee well. Thou must be married to no man but me. For I am he who was born to tame you, Kate, and bring you from a wild Kate to a Kate conformable as other household Kates. Here comes your father, never make denial. I must and will have Catherine to my wife. Lucio, how speeds you with my daughter? Well, sir, it were impossible I should speed amiss. Father, tis thus, yourself and all the world that have talked of her have talked amiss of her, for she's not cursed, but modest as the dove. And to conclude, we have agreed so well together that upon Sunday is the wedding day. Uh, I'll see thee hanged on Sunday first. Twas bargain twixt us twain, being alone, that she should still act cursed in company. I tell you, tis incredible to believe how much she loves me. Oh, the kindest Kate, how she hung about my neck with kiss and kiss that in a twink she won me to her love. Provide the feast, father, and bid the guests. I know not what to say, but it is a match. And kiss me, Kate. We will be married, O oh, Sunday. What now, Baptista, to your younger daughter? I am your neighbor, and will shoot her first. And I am one that loves Bianca more. Gentlemen, tis deeds must win the prize, and he that can assure my daughter greatest dower shall have my Bianca's love. As you know, my house within the city is richly furnished with plate and gold. Besides my house, I have a well-stocked farm and ivory coffers. Stuff full of crowns. I'll leave her houses three or four as good, besides two thousand ducats by the year. I must confess, your offer is the best. <gasps> on Sunday next, you know, my daughter Catherine is to be married. Now, on Sunday following, shall Bianca be bride to you. And so I take my leave, and thank you all. chamber put on clothes of mine. It may not be. Believe me, thus I'll marry her. Will you be married to my daughter? Thus? Good sooth, even thus. The four had done with words. To me she's married, not unto my clothes. But what a fool I am to chat with you, when I should bid good morrow to my bride, and seal the title with a lovely kiss.
and he had some meaning in his mad attire. <laughs>
names. What, no man at door? Grumio, Gregory, Philip. Here. 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 Sir. Sit down, Kate, and welcome. What, no attendance, no regard, no duty? You peasant swain, did I not have thee right post haste and have all things prepared proper for thy mistress? Gregory's coats were a little unpaint, and Philip's coat was not ready, sir. But here is it come to serve you. Go fetch my supper in. Sweet Kate, be merry. Some water here. Look, you rogue, you villain, why did you had fall? I pray you, husband, twas a fault unwilling. Sit down, Kate. Be merry. I know you have a stomach. Shall you say grace, or else shall I? What's this? Chicken? Who brought it? I... I... Tis burnt, and so is all the meat. What dogs are these? Where is the rascal cook? How dare you, villain, serve it thus to me? I pray you, husband, be not so disquiet. The meat were well if you were so contented. I tell thee, Kate, was burnt and dried away, and better toil than both of us did fast. <coughs> be patient. Tomorrow it shall be mended, and for this night we'll fast for company. Come, I will bring thee to thy bridal chamber. Philip, didst ever see the like? He kills her in her own humor, for he is a mirror to her. Away, away, for he comes to the... She ate no meat today, nor none shall eat. Last night she slept not, nor tonight she shall not. As with the meat, some undeserved fault, I'll find out the making of the bed. And here I'll clean the pillow, and there the bolster. And all done in reverent care of her. This is the way to kill a wife with kindness. No, no, for sake, I dare not for my life. Ah! What? Did he marry me to banish me? Beggars that come unto my father's door, upon entreat to have a prison alms. But I, who never knew how to entreat, no, nor never knew that I should entreat, and starve for me, giddy for lack of sleep, and what spites me more than all these wants, he does it in name of perfect love. I pray thee, give me some repast. I care not what, so be wholesome food. Mistress, what cheer? Faith, as cold as can be. Pluck up your spirits, look cheerfully upon me. See how diligent I am to dress thy meat myself and bring it thee? What, not a word? I'm sure, sweet Kate, this kindness merits thanks. Why then thou likest it not? Here, take away the dish. I pray thee let it stand. Even the smallest service is repaid with thanks, and so shall I before you touch the meat. I thank you, sir. Much good do it unto thy gentle heart, Kate. Eat apace. And now, my honey love, we will return unto thy fathers to revel it as bravely as the best, with silken coats and caps and golden rings and ruffs and cuffs and farthingales and things. What hast thou dined? The milliner stays thy leisure to deck thy body with her ruffling treasure. Come, Milner, let us see thy ornaments. Lay forth the cap and gown. Here is the cap you were shifted to speak. Why, this was molded on a porringer. A knack, a toy, a trick, a baby's cap. 
Away with it. Let me have a bigger. I'll have no bigger. This cap doth fit the times. And gentlewomen wear such caps as these. And when you are gentler, you shall have one too. And not before. <laughs> Why, no, no, leave both thy gown. Oh, mercy, what stuff is here? But What's this, a sleeve? Tis like a demi-cannon. You, you bid me make it orderly and well, according to the fashion of the time. Oh, monstrous arrogance, thou liest. Thou thread, thou thimble, away thou rag, thou quantity, thou remnant. I tell thee, I. That thou hast marred her gown. Your worship is deceived. The gown is made just as I was given direction. Romeo gave the order as to how it should be done. The note of the fashion said, Item one, a loose body gown. <laughs> Master, if ever I said a loose bodied gown, sew me in the skirts of it and beat me to death. With a bottom of brown thread, I said, a gown with a small compass cape. I confess the thing. With a trunk sleeve, I confess two sleeves. The sleeves curiously cut. Aye, there's the villainy. And now, Kate, we will, as we turn unto thy fathers, our garments shall be poor, our purse is proud, for tis the mind that makes the body rich. And therefore frolic, we will henceforth wit, to feast and sport us at thy father's house. Grumio, call my men, and let us stay for him. Let's see, tis nearly seven, and well we may come there by dinner time. I dare assure you, sir, tis almost two, and twill be nearly supper time ere you come there. It shall be seven, or I will not ride. <laughs> what I speak, or do, or think to do, you are still crossing of it. Oh. Nay, let it alone. I will not go today, and ere I do, it shall be what o'clock I say it is.
I say it is the moon. I know it is the moon. Why then you lie, it is the blessed sun. Then I'll be blessed. It is the blessed sun. But sun it is not when you say it is not. And the moon changes even as your mind. What you will have it named, that it is. And so shall it be for Catherine. But soft, what company is coming here? Fair lovely maid, what? good day to thee. Whither away? Tell me, Kate, and tell me truly too. Hath thou ever beheld a fresher gentlewoman? Fair lovely maid, once more good day to thee. Sweet Kate, embrace her for her beauty's sake. Young budding virgin, fair and fresh and light, whither away or where is thy abode? Happy the parents of so fair a child. Why, Kate, I hope thou art not mad. This is a man, old, oh, faded, wrinkled, withered, and not a maiden as thou sayest he is. Pardon, old father, my mistaken <laughs> eyes, which have been so bedazzled with the sun, that everything I see is green and young. Now I perceive thou art a reverend father. Pardon me my mad mistaking. Pardon her, grandsire, and with all make known which way thou travelest. If along with us, we shall be joyful of thy company. My name is called Vincentio, my dwelling Pisa, and I am bound to Padua and there to visit a son of mine, which I have long not seen. He studies at the university. of his choice. <laughs> and once the church is empty, no, no, we no. to marry you to your mistress. We fly.
very mean meaning. To her, Kate. Ah! To her, ah! widow. Ah! By your leave, my lords, oh. the ladies no. would withdraw.
Thank you for coming.